And now from our dynamic family interview area, it's Joni Smith. Well, thank you so much. It's a Saturday morning. It is our final day of Radiothon, and we are going to hit it hard with the Peterson family. Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for making the trip in from Holman today. We have Pat and Stephanie, and, of course, Mackenzie is the star. <laughs> and, Mackenzie, I'm so glad you're here this morning. Not much of a morning person. No, she is not a morning person. But she's a party animal at night, I understand. Yeah, and par at night when she's supposed to be going to bed for school, then she's ready to have a lot of fun. <laughs> And she just turned 14 this summer. Yes, she did. So you have two teenagers in the house, mm -hmm. and you have a nine-year-old, and the boys are home this morning, yes. and you're pretty sure that your oldest, who had a football game last night? Yeah, he had a football game last night. Okay, so he'll be zonked out till you guys get home. Oh, at least, probably one o'clock in the afternoon before we see him. Well, exactly. <laughs> so uh, how did Miss McKenzie do this morning when you had to get her going? <laughs> she wasn't really excited about getting up early on a Saturday morning, um, but um, she's here. We made it, so um, I'm, I'm glad we were able to be here. What school does McKenzie go to? Um, she's an eighth grader at Holman Middle School. Okay. Love school? Does she love it? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Ride the bus? She yep, rides the she bus? likes to ride the bus. She has a pretty short ride. We just live down the road from the school, but she does enjoy riding the bus. Um, let's start with McKenzie's story. How does, how does McKenzie's story start? Uh, well, Mackenzie was born um, full term, what we thought was a healthy, normal baby. She didn't really have any complications at birth other than um, a small head circumference that they did some, a few tests t to look into that a little bit. Oh, she's going to give us a cough now, which she does a lot. Oh, goodness, she's got a power That's cough. That's all right. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, they really didn't find anything extraordinarily wrong with her when she was born. So we took her home and, um, you know, she had a few developmental delays here and there. And we mm -hmm. had started her in the birth to three program. But I want to say when she was about five months old, yeah. Pat was holding her one evening and she had her first seizure. And um, at that point, we started looking into a little more thorough testing to see if there was a reason for that. Pat, have you had you ever seen a seizure before? Anyone have one? Uh, no, especially with a uh, five month. And <laughs> so terrified what yep. happened ambulance How? call and okay. right on down okay mm -hmm. yep. all right and you were home alone um uh, no, no we, we were, we were all home. oh you yep. were, oh, you were, we were all, all home. home okay mm -hmm. so um wow all of a sudden here's something that no one can anticipate yeah, I and mean, yeah. even when we brought her into the emergency room, they thought mm -hmm. maybe it was just a febrile seizure or just one of those fluke things that happen with babies. Okay. But um, after we did a few more tests, then um, and they did an MRI, and then they they found her brain abnormality that that causes the lysencephaly that she has. So when that news hit you guys, like a brick wall, what happened? Um, yeah, I remember being in the doctor's office that day and being told what she had. And um, they actually told us on a Friday when they read the MRI results at like a 5 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon we got a phone call. And all we were told was, don't Google it. We'll talk about it on Monday. <laughs> okay. So that was um, a long weekend. To did you go home and Google? Or did oh, of, you course, of course I did. Yeah. Um, I don't listen. They tell you not to, and then the <laughs> first thing you do is do it. Yeah, yep. exactly. Um, yeah, so we, we looked it up and, you know, basically just didn't really understand what we were reading but when we went into the doctor on Monday they just kind of said that you know lysencephaly can be very severe all the way to very minor and it just depends on how much of her brain is impacted by it and that she was really going to write her own book and um, we're really honestly just kind of along for the ride. Um, they told us the things to expect like the developmental delays and obviously epilepsy is one of her bigger challenges um, but um, other than that um, I think we've been kind of lucky if you can say lucky that it seems like Mackenzie's challenges have kind of come one at a time I know a lot of people when they have kids with special needs they're born with all these things they have to deal with at once and they're going home from the hospital with feeding tubes and all kinds of equipment and you know, it's just kind of been added slowly over time. Um, she was table fed till she was almost, what, three? And yeah, then she three. finally started kind of aspirating her food, and then we had to switch to a, a feeding tube. So added that and added a few more seizure medications, got the wheelchair when she was three and started therapies. And it's just kind of added on over time. But, you know, you just kind of roll with it. And we always say as long as she's happy and healthy, we can we can deal with the rest now with her medications do you have to, do they quit working after a period of time i mean it, how's how does that go um, well, she takes um, several different seizure medications. Um, her epilepsy is called intractable epilepsy, meaning it's not fully controlled by medications. Um, you know, it's pretty well controlled. You know, she has a few jerks here and there, a small seizure here and there. But um, 
Uh, she's, you know, the medications, she has to take them like three times a day. They do wear off after a while. Some of them build up in the bloodstream and you have a little more leeway with when you have to give the medications, but some of them really do wear off after like six hours and you have to give more. Um, and then she has to take some medications just to protect her, her organs from the damage that the seizure medications can cause. So six hours. And guess what? We have six calls right now already <laughs> at 608-784-KIDS. <laughs> it's 608-784-5437. Dynamic Life Cycle Innovations. On, listen to them over there on the phones. They're Diversity Blood Center of Wisconsin Phone Bank. You're a member of that team. In I fact, am. When, when your um, interview will be, you know. I'm going to go jump on the phone when we're done with the jumping interview. Jumping on the phone. Join my team over there. That's <laughs> right. And, you know, uh, partnering up with your company, I can't tell you how <laughs> wonderful that has been. And um, we continue yeah. to uh, grow together in this effort and your support. It's not just, you know, you all coming in every year. I mean, you all believe it. And it's like your passion is right there. Yeah, there's several of us at the company that have um, benefited from the generosity of CMN over the years. Plus, you know, I think everyone at the company just knows what a great organization it is. And we do several fundraisers throughout the year to benefit CMN. And even it seems we'll do some fundraisers at the company where we let the winner choose where they want to send the funds. And even with those, a lot of those go towards CMN because everyone just really loves this organization. How has the Peterson family benefited from CMN? Well, uh, uh, with the food stamps uh, and and vouchers those worked out well when we're have long stays and you've had long yeah. stays yeah, we've had and you've had many stays yeah. <laughs> can yes. you remember how many how many hospital stays you've had i probably can't even add them up oh probably somewhere close to i would say a dozen by this point yeah there was a bad um, stretch years. there for a number of years yeah but there was a bad stretch when she was you know it seemed kind of around when our youngest was born you know they bring new viruses in the house and she got <laughs> sure our, she got course. rsv what twice in three months yes. when liam was a baby um they told us that hardly ever happens but you know we always joke that if it could hardly ever happen it's, it's gonna, gonna happen, happen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah twice yeah. in three months she had rsv first time was just only a couple three-day hospital stay the second time was two weeks in the icu so so those food vouchers <laughs> came in handy did you know about children Children's Miracle Network prior to McKinsey I, yeah. coming into your life you you had known yeah, yeah I my mom actually worked at the hospital um, my entire time I was growing up and I actually was a candy striper here when I was a teenager so I helped out with some of the CMN projects back then but definitely did not know the extent of everything that they do for the hospital and for families in the area and probably didn't know that um, you would be one of the ones <laughs> that'd be yeah. helping out what yeah. what else did you receive do you remember um, well, when we had our first home, um, it was a, a very 70s ranch house when mm -hmm. we had Kenzie. So the bathroom was not at all conducive to someone who has mobility issues. So we had to completely gut the bathroom in that oh, house. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what about the doorway? Was that wide enough or did oh, you no. have to totally no. see those? It had two doorways yeah. in one bathroom. It had a one doorway and then it had a tiny doorway to get into the bathtub. So we had to actually gut the wall out to get to the bathtub and put in a roll-in shower. And um, CMN, um, uh, at the county actually helped it us with the funding for the bathroom bathroom remodel but we ran into some issues with the size of the shower ended up being didn't work with the size of the shower chair and we ended up having to buy a new shower yeah. at the last minute so CMN jumped in and funded um, that shower purchase that we had to make which was quite expensive and not budgeted for in the cost of the remodel you know when you're doing remodel first of all <laughs> you know you're not living a normal life yeah. you know because your house is torn up mm -hmm. but you think you've got the plan and you've got everything ordered and then it doesn't work and you at the last minute Wow. <laughs> I just can even, I can just picture that one in my mind. Yeah, we didn't have a functioning bathroom, and then we found out that the shower wasn't going to work, so it was delaying the project. But, um, you know, we, we reached out to our, our nurse care coordinator here, and we were thinking it was going to take a while to get this all worked out. And within, what, a couple days, yeah. we had that funding figured out, and the new shower was ordered and put in, and I think our bathroom was put back together less than a week after that. So so the team here, nurse nurse coordinator? Yes, nurse, we have nurse a care nurse coordinator. care coordinator. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't actually get her until Kenzie was around four years old. Yeah. I think nobody knew we didn't have one. <laughs> we find yeah. out that a lot that people don't know you don't have things if you don't know to ask for them. Um, and we met um, Teresa Falk as our care coordinator, and she is amazing. Um, you know, if Kenzie, if I get a call from school during the day that Kenzie's not feeling well, um, I can just call Teresa, and she will call over to Peds and try to find a Peds doctor. Because with a child like Mackenzie, it's kind of hard to just bring her into any doctor. Um, taking her to the urgent care is usually not great because people just don't know her and they don't know what part of what's going on is her being sick and what is her normal so 
um, we have kind of a small arsenal of doctors that have gotten to know her over the years, and she will reach out and try to find someone who can squeeze her in. Um, like last Saturday, we had to bring her in, and she got us in with someone on a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, and all I had to do was make one phone call on a Friday afternoon, and she took care of all of that for us. Um, she also helps out. Kenzie has a lot of appointments down in Madison. Um, in she, Madison? Yeah, mm-hmm. she does a lot of her neurology care down through um, University of Wisconsin, the Children's Hospital in Madison. And she's even great with that, with helping coordinate things with that. If I'm having a challenge with getting something coordinated, she will call down there and try and get things taken care of for us. And, you know, that's not even the hospital she works at, but she will do that for us. And that that is so helpful. Well, eight calls. We're up to eight calls right now. We're going to shoot for 12. I think we'll shoot for 12. We're at eight right now, and the phone number is 608-784-KIDS, 784-5437. She loves school. Look, she's taking a snooze right now. Good girl. Oh, Oh. no, she woke up. She's thinking about waking up. She's thinking about waking up. Well, the (laughs) lights are so bright. (laughs) So what what do you think she enjoys most about going to school, her school day? I think uh, being around other kids gets her excited, and uh, the kids really treat her well. She's kind of almost a, a mascot. <laughs> when she comes in, everybody knows her, and uh, I think that's probably what she gets most excited about. Uh, then music probably is her. Yeah, we have we, we can kind of pick some of the classes she's going to be in. So we tend mm-hmm. to pick anything musical. She loves all things music. So she goes to choir. She goes to orchestra. She goes to band. She loves the loud noise and the music. And I do see notes that come home almost every day saying that Kenzie really enjoyed social time at lunch today, that she gets all excited and is kicking and smiling at lunchtime. She loves being around the kids. Yeah. We've had so many families over the last two days tell us how music therapy has helped. It doesn't matter, you know, what the child's issues health issues are or mobility issues or whatever it may be it's music therapy every day we have mm-hmm. heard a family mm-hmm. say i don't know what we would do without the healing aspect of music mm-hmm. and stimulating their mind and you know maybe taking their mind off some things that we don't know that they're focused on sure. you know would you agree with that oh yeah I would definitely agree um, even just the the distraction piece like if Mackenzie's upset about something or one of our care providers will call me during the day and say oh Kenzie just seems unhappy right now I'll say oh well just you know play some music have a little dance party with her and just you know distracting her like that from whatever's bugging her seems to just make a huge amount of difference and we do mm-hmm. do the music therapy once a week they come out to our house we've been doing oh they do it. they come to your yeah. house yeah we've oh, done it a few see, different ways um, they came out to our house for a while we went out to West Salem to their offices um, mm-hmm. that's fun too but um, with our crazy busy schedule it really works so well that they're able to come out um, they come on Wednesdays when Kenzie's home after school with her care provider before we come home from work um, just gives her something to do during that time and yeah we've seen huge advancements with her with with music therapy I mean when she was younger her hands were just fisted and up like this and she wouldn't use them and now she'll grasp a drumstick and hit a drum and she'll play the piano as soon as you put those instruments in front of her her hands are just wiggling and ready to go i see that she's wearing uh for lack of a better term um fingerless gloves Mm -hmm. what 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 are the gloves for um those are compression gloves um mackenzie has always had issues since she was i don't know what four or five years old with just a lot of like swelling and fluid retention and you know we've we've looked into it several times to make sure it wasn't a hard issue or a kidney issue and all that came back normal but I think finally it was when we were in the hospital in January they brought a therapist in to look at her and they actually diagnosed her with lymphedema Um, and we got her some custom made um, ones for her legs that she doesn't have on right now but and she also has the gloves for her hands and since we started using those um, she's lost what 10 pounds of water weight just by getting that fluid recirculated back through her body and she can wear normal shoes now and (laughs) you can feel the bones in her hands again. Well right now she has on some adorable um, Polar bear, slipper, sparkly <laughs> combination. Yes, today she's sporting her morning um, her, her lounging her shoes. Slippers. Yes. yes, we call them lounging shoes. Yes. <laughs> At home, making the decision on a Saturday morning to call in a pledge. What would you say to someone who's making that decision right now? Um, I would say, you know, there's lots of different places that you can you can give your charitable dollars, and it's certainly hard to decide with so many great causes. Um, this one, I just I love CMN, how the money all stays right here and helps families. I mean, we have many families that we know. Obviously, our, our friend circle is full of many other families that are dealing with a lot of the same issues we are, and just hearing about the challenges they have, and, you know, some of them just honestly can't afford some of the most basic needs that their kids have, like the music therapy or their insurance doesn't cover it. 
um, you know, to be able to give that gift to them, to be able to do music therapy and use their hands in ways they haven't used before or, you know, helping out with those meal vouchers. It sounds so small, but, you know, when we're in the hospital and Pat comes at the end of the day and brings the boys from school and we can all go down together and have a meal together. Yeah, it's in the cafeteria, but that's the only time we get to spend with all of us together during those weeks when she's in the hospital. And, you know, that means a lot to get to spend that time together as a family. Well, I think a couple people were listening because, John, I think we're getting an update here on some of the calls that have come in. We were at nine and let's see, I think someone decided, yep, that sounds like a great reason. We have 10 calls in right this very minute at 608-784-KIDS. It's 608-784-5437. What's next for Missy over here? What's next for Mackenzie? Uh, well, she's yeah. going to finish middle school after this year, and yep. then she'll go on to high school at Holman High School, and um, hoping that things in her, her day won't change too much then. She likes her routine. So, <laughs> What is her morning What Can you take us through a day? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, what, it's... What time does... Uh, does Mackenzie like to get up? Um, yeah. Oh, what time does Mackenzie like to get up? Yeah. On a Saturday, what, 10 o'clock? Oh, yeah. 10. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 10. <laughs> 10 ish, and then stay up till like 11 at night watching movies with the family. <laughs> Normal kid behavior, I think. Um, but on a weekday, um, you know, we get up at what, 6, 6.15 so, yeah. for school so that we have time to do medications just to get her meds and then get her dressed and getting her out of the bed. When, when dad's home, he can lift her. But if I'm home alone, I have to use a lift to get her out of bed and that takes time. Um, and then, So she does have a lift over, over the we bed? We have a, a lift on wheels that we can oh, wheel okay. over Got her it. bed and okay. I lift her up and then we go over and put her down into her chair. And when I'm home alone, Pat travels for work sometimes. I, I need to have that otherwise. I can't take care of her right. when I'm home alone. Right. So, um, but yeah, get her in her chair. And then we have um, some vest treatment that she does to clear secretions from her lungs so that she doesn't get um, respiratory infections. And that takes about 20 minutes. And We saw a, the vest yesterday. Mm -hmm. Dr. Marr was here. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, our Dave Kennedy over here, he put one on. Oh, did he get to demo the vest? Yeah, we got to demo the vest, <laughs> and they cranked it up on him. <laughs> and this morning, we were wondering, because, I mean, seriously, we saw what that I mean, we didn't see what it does to the internal mm -hmm. organs, yeah. but we could figure it out. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mars said, you know, Dave, you might be a little sore tomorrow, but he didn't keep it on enough oh. because the compression and working around the rib cage mm -hmm. area, I mean, that was an education yesterday. Yeah. So Mackenzie has a vest. Mackenzie has a vest. 20 minutes each day. Uh, tw it's uh, 20 minutes for a treatment, and we do one in the morning when she gets up, just to kind of get those secretions out that have pooled overnight while she's okay. sleeping, and then she gets another one before bed. Um, it's a really invaluable tool when she gets a cold because you can do it as often as every two to four hours. So when she has a cold, we do amp it up. It's like every four hours. If it's a bad cold, we'll amp it up to every two hours. But um, it's nice because we can actually send it to school now. We've worked with the school. It comes in a nice little carry case. It's looks like a suitcase and this one yesterday well this one was really decorated nice um it had like little paisley decorations oh yes and you stuff. can you can deck them out um for the kids and kenzie's has a pink camo vest there you go. um so yeah it's real stylish for her and uh yeah we take it to school so that you know if she's kind of at the tail end of a cold but not sick enough to have to stay home but yet you're so worried that you need to get that stuff out of her or it's going to make her sicker again we can send it right to school and they just put it on her right there in the classroom and she wears it while she's at school and doesn't seem to bother her any. <laughs> You're listening to Radiothon, Children's Miracle Network Radiothon. The phone number is 608-784-KIDS, 608-784-5437, Dynamic Life Cycle Innovations. They are on the phone bank, taking your calls. We got them coming in. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> ten calls. We have ten calls. That is Excellent. Saturday morning, getting the weekend started off right. This is our third day. We're going to finish big. What would you like to leave us with? You have a parting thought you'd like to leave us with? Um, just um, so we really appreciate all the support and um, it's, there's just so many different ways you know in hearing other kids stories that CMN helps and I just love that it all stays right here you know exactly who's getting helped with those funds and you know a lot of the things these kids need are expensive and everyone has different levels of support through their insurance and and through their income so it's just wonderful to know that this safety net is here if you need it um, Kenzie has an upcoming um, surgery that we're hoping to do down in Madison to try to help further control seizures and CMN has already 
chipped in for us by giving us some gas cards and some um, visa cards for hotel stays for our family. So we've got those at the ready when we can get those appointments scheduled. So just one less thing to worry one about. One less thing to worry about with this coming up to know that we won't have to pay for, for, for gas and, and lodging for our family when we're down there. Dad, what do you think? No, I, I think it's been uh, great that it's, you know, it doesn't really matter quite what you need. You can ask, and, you know, it's not specific. We only do one thing or one other thing, and it's, if like I said, the bathtub. You know, who would, who would have thought that would be something that would be covered? Right. You just you have to ask, and... And there it is. And there it is. Mm -hmm. 11 calls. We did super. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in this morning. We know it was Thank a challenge. <laughs> Every day is a challenge, and we appreciate that. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. You're listening to the Radiothon. It's a CMN Hospital Radiothon. Put your money where the miracles are. A service of the Lacrosse Media Group. Thank you, Joni. 20 minutes away from 9 o'clock. Our Versity phone bank lines open, 608-784-KIDS, 784-5437. Man, that was awesome, but we really got a lot of work to do yet today. We really need your help. We know that it's fun to wait till the last day. Well, the last day is here. Let's all make it happen, please. 608-784-KIDS, 784-5437. Put your money right where the miracles are. Today's broadcasts are brought to us by Oral Surgery Clinic of La Crosse, and we need your help. Dynamic Life Cycle Innovations work in our phone bank right now. 608-784-KIDS. 784-5437 on the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals Radiothon on Kix 1063.